Hey everyone, welcome to this edition of our CHP Spotlight interview series. Um, today we have a really cool interview here. With us we have uh, Dr. Richard Edgar. He is with Anderson Orthopedic Clinics and he's a fantastic um, physician. Really, we, we talked a lot, um, Dr. Edgar, about your specialty and background in soccer, which we're going to get into, which I think is pretty cool for all you athletes out there. Um, but he also specializes in non-operative treatment of musculoskeletal injuries, his advanced training with concussion management, diagnostic ultrasound, ultrasound guided injections, and all sorts of great stuff that we're going to chat today about today. So um, Dr. Edgar, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, I appreciate you guys having me on. Uh, excited to kind of uh, chat with you guys, kind of explain a little bit more about what we do and kind of how we can help help uh, your patients. Absolutely love it. And um, yeah, I know you're going to be a, a great resource for us now in the McLean area. So that's for everybody watching this. That's how we make contact is I kind of, as I told you, Dr. Edgar is one of those things where, you know, like, well, we know we're going to need some good people to refer folks to. So just so you know, everybody out there have been super impressed so far um, with the work we've already done together. And so um, that's why he's on here. And um, but was, with that being said, you know, love for all of us to find out a little bit more about you, Dr. Edgar, and more specifically, like the kinds of conditions that you treat, types of patients that you work with. Yeah, no, that's great. So I actually uh, relatively local, grew up in St. Mary's County, went to school at George Mason, played soccer there. Uh, so really excited to be back in the area and reconnect with uh, a lot of people that I know. From uh, from the tr the conditions that I treat, uh, the non-operative side of things, really with my primary care training, I can see everything. Um, ideally, what I'm looking at is kind of the sports-related injuries. Uh, that's probably about 30% of the practice. Probably 30% of the practice that you're going to see a lot of kind of middle-aged uh, kind of weekend warriors. Uh, getting back out there, some tendonitis, overuse injuries. Um, and then as patients get a little bit older, we're really looking at the arthritis conditions and how maybe you're not quite a surgical candidate, but how can we you know, make your quality of life better uh, until that time for surgery comes? Um, my training allows me to do a lot of ultrasound guided injections and advanced ultrasound guided procedures uh, such as 10X, uh, which is great for some chronic tendinopathy issues, um, as well as PRP injections, which is another uh, great option for, for those issues. Uh, I'm actually currently talking about doing ultrasound-guided carpal tunnel releases and trigger finger releases, and so going through that training right now, which I'm really excited to be able to offer uh, to patients in the future. Um, and then, you know, sports related concussions is, is something that I have a lot of, a lot of training in. Uh, we saw many students in my training with the high school students in football, uh, as well as a lot of the guys from the Philadelphia Union when I was working with them. Um, and yeah, really, really can see pretty much anything and kind of help triage uh, where the best place to go. If you don't think you're a surgical candidate, uh, we kind of help, help manage you from there. Absolutely. And, and, and it's a really cool sort of nice place that you live because right sometimes people need to some additions especially to the to the rehab maybe that we're providing on our end but maybe right they're not quite to the point where they need surgery and so it's like okay well then who do we bring in and I know um, and that's a great spot and so you mentioned that you know you have the background in soccer and I mentioned that too in the time with the Philadelphia Union and I know now recently you were in Spain with correct me if I'm wrong here the U17 team is that correct yeah, yeah, it was it was the U sixteen team uh, for the men's soccer side, um, but yeah, it was it was a great experience. Um, got to kind of reconnect. I actually played with the the under fifteens and the under seventeen men's national team, so it was a great way for me to re reconnect with the organization, kind of give back to a program that that provided me with many opportunities growing up. That's really cool. And then speaking of soccer players, you know what are the the most common injuries that you've seen with them, and then you know, what, what do you often see as like a common cause of some of these? Yeah. So I think, I think with soccer players, it's always the lower extremity, uh, issues that kind of arise ankles, knees. Um, oftentimes I see, see this as a, is there a strength, uh, deficiency, even with the union guys, when we would do some different sports performance and metrics and looking at hamstring strength, there was always a dominant, dominant side, um, and so I think strength overuse for sure. A lot of the times I find that patients are kind of, especially your younger patients are being a little bit more sports specific, 
which is, you know, you think it's you're doing the right thing by focusing on soccer or focusing on basketball. Uh, but really, you, you need to get out there and kind of broaden your horizons a little bit. And so I think utilizing all the other sports at, at someone's disposal to kind of use different muscles that maybe you, you wouldn't. And I think it's one thing that's that great for, you know, that I was really excited about with you guys is that you guys do a functional assessment. You're great at looking at the sport specific uh return to play and and uh, like i said i was really excited uh to connect with you guys absolutely i appreciate that and um it's it's cool to hear so hear your perspective there in regards to just some of those one of i'm sure many root causes that are out there um and so you mentioned a little bit about the early like sports specialization um you know can you could you tell us a little bit about like in your in your opinion from what, what you've seen you mentioned, you know, obviously working different muscles and things like that, but is there anything else that is almost detrimental to the long-term development of an athlete by specializing too early? I think you need to remember that, that a lot of these young athletes, they're still kids. Um, even though I was playing for the national team, I love basketball. Um, I wasn't good at tennis, uh, but I, I thought it was a fun sport to play. And so I think, you know, lacrosse, all of these things, they're, you're going to supplement your your primary sport, if you will, but you're also going to still experience, uh, have new experiences. You're going to have new friend friend groups, new relationships, uh, new challenges, and that kind of keeps you sharp. And so one thing that I think isn't talked about as much is, you know, the mental health side of, for, our, for our young athletes. And if you're, you're pressured into one sport, you forget about the fun and the love for the game. And so I actually went ahead and, and went through the International Olympic Committee and got a certificate in elite athlete mental health, because I think, you know, when you're going through these injuries, it's important to remember that, you know, these kid, kids are usually used to being out and playing around, especially uh, someone at a high level and to tell, have them cooped up. They don't like that very much. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I hear you there. And it's so interesting. It's like I've asked that question to about the dangers of early sports specialization, things like that, because I think it's something that is really important. And I think it's becoming more and more prevalent as, as time goes on. And um, I've gotten a lot of great answers, but that that's really cool. I love how you went into like, sort of the mental health side of things, because that's not something that's often talked about there. It's usually, a lot of times it's really easy to focus on sort of the athletic qualities that can suffer. Um, Cause you know, of course that is true. Like, playing multiple sports for people out there. Like when you're young, like in your developing, it teaches you how to be almost better improvisers in many ways in your main sport by learning different movement strategies, et cetera. But also, like you said, I mean, burnout's real. And I know in, uh, you mentioned tennis, like that's the sport that start, starts to pop into my head when I think of, you know, these, uh, this high burnout and attrition rate early on. So that's a really, really good point. And you know, I know given a lot of the lower body injuries that you see with these soccer players, um, you know, things like ACLs and meniscus issues come up a lot and um, and like some hip issues related to like um, femoral acetabular impingement and for anybody watching, they just call it FAI in many situations and it's more of a catch-all term. Um, I don't know about if you've seen this, uh, Drager, but I'm just curious because my, and I, and I feel like with our practice, we've noticed kids coming to us younger and younger and younger specifically with some of those hip issues but the knee issues as well um i'm curious have you noticed the same thing and if so do you feel like that's also related to the sports specialization piece or is there like another factor that you see as well yeah no it's interesting you know i'm still a little young in practice and so i don't know if i can say that i've seen a trend per se um but i do think that it's related to the early sports specialization um as as the younger athletes are developing it's such a time of rapid growth and different changes in their body um the strength just doesn't always kind of keep up and so you really have to make sure that the core is strong uh, i find that if you can keep your core strong some of the other issues uh, are are not going to be apparent in those individuals who have, um, but yeah, I haven't I haven't been able to say that I can see a, a trend one way or another. Unfortunately, yeah, it's all good. Figure I always always figure I ask because I'm always curious. Like, am I going crazy? Am I seeing the same same thing that everybody else is? Um, so, with that being said, one thing I really wanted to touch on, which this is 
one well, so this is what I think is so cool. And I know it's on your um in your bio on your website. So so I'm so 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 I hope it's okay that I share, but I know you have type one diabetes. And one thing you and I had chatted about is some of this is your passion for um teaching athletes because how to manage that while being an athlete. Um, because obviously you had to go through that and how there's not a lot of resources for people out there. Um First off, I'd love to hear, you know, how, how does, how did, I guess, how did it, how did having diabetes impact you as a high level athlete? I mean, and, and, you know, in, 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 in general, obviously, how does it impact athletes in general? And then of course, are there anything we need to keep in mind for anybody watching out there who maybe has diabetes, but also has an injury? Like, how does that impact maybe recovery as well? Yeah, no, I think it's I think it's a great question. It's definitely a passion of mine. Part of the reason why I'm here as a sports medicine physician, uh, physician in general, is because of my diabetes. Uh, it first off, it's exhausting to try and manage and keep up at a high level. Uh, but in doing so, you're able to continue at that high level. And so I think it gave me discipline growing up. Uh, and I I hope that for if anyone out there has type one and is an athlete, that they can find a similar discipline because it does help. Um, keeping your glucose under control uh, is going to do a great job in terms of preventing some of those chronic overuse injuries. As a diabetic athlete, you're at higher risk for chronic tendinopathy. Um, you know, we I did research in fellowship looking at you know medical comorbidities in college athletes with diabetes, and we found that they were uh, astronomically more likely to have meningitis. They were more likely to have seizure disorders, sleep disorders, and all of this kind of plays into the hormonal regulation with diabetes and the fluctuations in your glucose. And so trying to figure out, um, you know, sleep is such, sleep and recovery is such an important thing for athletes and their recovery. And so if you're having disruptions in that because of your diabetes, well, clearly you're not going to be able to perform at the level that you want to do perform at. And so uh, it's definitely a passion of mine. We're, we looked at, we also just kind of expanded that research looking at does, does having diabetes affect baseline concussion uh, scores for impact, uh, for example. Uh, and for most of it, it, it turns out it doesn't, but we also don't know how does having diabetes impact your recovery. And so that's kind of the next step of our research that we're going to take it to. Um, you got to make thousands of decisions every single day. What do I eat? When do I eat? How do I eat? What type of exercise am I going to do? Am I going to go high because of anaerobic exercise? Am I doing a lot of aerobic exercise while I go low? And so it's a challenge to say the least. Yeah. It sounds almost mentally exhausting in some ways more than anything else. Um, and I'm curious, are there with that like mental exhaustion that can, can come in of just constantly having to be just on on about being aware of sort of where your, your blood sugar levels are, et cetera. Are there resources out there for athletes that maybe are in the situation to where you were at like at this point? Cause I know you mentioned when you were coming up, there wasn't much at much available. You know, AMSSM has a position statement uh, for for athletic trainers, sports physicians of kind of how to manage these individuals. Um, Sherry Kohlberg actually has a great, great book, Diabetic Athlete. She has, she's since come up with a second one. And I find, I found her book to be quite helpful. I am in the process of working on a website called diabeticathlete.com, which I hope to have, yeah, provide resources, both from an athletic perspective, parents, coaches, uh, trainers, and then more from a medical perspective of kind of like research and what's out there. And so hopefully I will have that up in the coming months. It's been, uh, been a challenge with also getting practice up and going and, and kind of all the other uh, things. I also have a two-year-old son. And so uh, you get pulled in different directions, but hopefully that'll be soon. But yeah, I mean, I think the resources are a lot of times you hear from friends, family, other athletes who have, have diabetes, they've gone through it. And I hope to be able to establish that relationship for some of those athletes in the area. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and, and Dr. And Dr. When you have that, what you're working on now, like ready to go, like obviously send it to me because for anybody out here, I know there's a lot of people we've worked with um, that are going to watch this, that are on our list that we send this out to um, who have diabetes, have people in their family that are, especially kids and things like that. So 
um, I know that'd be a great resource. I would love to point um, their way as well. And so speaking of the diabetes, the last really question I have there is, you know, of course, from our perspective, now it gets me wondering as well, when we see people who have, uh, you know, type one diabetes and what things, I guess, as patients out there for people watching this, um, and it applies also, also to us as physical therapists, do we need to keep in mind for people recovering from an injury, whether it be in, in, and is there differences we need to keep in mind if it's like a surgical recovery versus more of just like, you know, you're, you're, you're a classic, like sort of muscle strain or something like that, that, you know, is not obviously need requiring surgical intervention. No, I think it's a great question. I think from a surgical perspective, you really want to make sure that the, the surgical sites looking looks well, there's no evidence of infection. We're just, if you have diabetes, you're at a higher risk of infection to begin with. And so that's probably first and foremost from a surgical side. Now, I don't do surgeries, but I think everyone would appreciate uh, that. Um, in terms of recovery from muscle tendon issues, it's just going to take longer. And so don't don't get discouraged. Understand that, you know, depending on the level of control of your glucose and your A1Cs, but even even you can do the best that you can it's still just going to take a little bit longer to recover. And that's just the nature of the beast of living with diabetes. Gotcha. Wow. That's all right. Well, that, that's really helpful to know. Really helpful to know. I mean, this was super illuminating for anybody watching this, by the way, I'm going to put Dr. Edgar's contact information um, below the video. So we'll include, um, we'll include the website where you can find him. He's at, again, Anderson Orthopedic Clinic. Um, I don't know, Dr. Edgar, if there's anything else you want to share about the best way to contact you, please shout it out, but I'll make sure to also put that information below the video. Yeah. So I think the best way to find out, find out about us is go to our website at andersonclinic.com. Uh, you can call our general number at 703-892-6500. And then they should be able to kind of route you over to our, to our pod. Um, I see people in multiple offices. And so our newest office is actually in Reston, which a lot of the McLean patients I've seen thus far has find it find it to be the easiest office to get to. Uh, it's right at the Reston Hospital uh, Center. I also go to our Annandale office right off of Gallows Road and then to Mount Vernon, which is in Mount Vernon Hospital. Gotcha. Okay. So no excuses. <laughs> if you need help, he can help you. And again, I've really found a lot of um, value for us. And I know our patients have really appreciated um, being able to see, see physicians that they know aren't going to um, where the first option isn't going to necessarily be surgery, where you can get some answers, see what's going on using something like an ultrasound that isn't invasive as an example. So it's not scary. It's been a huge help. And so, um, Dr. Edgar, thanks again for joining us. Um, this has been awesome and hope to have you on again sometime. I appreciate the opportunity and, uh, look forward to figuring out a way to be able to continue to help each other. Awesome.